My brother, come on, was singing his heart out, wasn't he? Amen. He saw the blood sweating from his pit. And it, come on, brother. No, only, only Jesus had the blood sweating. Only Jesus, only Jesus. But uh, that was through prayer. Amen? Come on, bro. But uh, today we're going to talk about faithfully living like Christ. Amen, guys? Amen. Faithfully living like Christ. And, uh, you know, growing up, many of us imitated different things. You know, I was a big Michael Jackson fan. Come on. And so I wanted to be like Michael Jackson back in the day. And at that time, I had the big fro, you know, back then. And um, that was one of my heroes at, at that time, many, many years ago. Now today, people, you know, like to live like they're, you know, uh, people that they admire, their, their favorite singing artists, you know, their favorite workout artists, their favorite uh, Facebook inspiration, one that gets, you know, two million hits, you know, you know, all those different things that we look at and that we want to emulate. But when you think about Jesus, how many people faithfully want to be like Christ? Yeah. And when I say faithfully, then you're, you're faithful. You believe that He is the Son of God, that He resurrected from the dead, and that the, the way He was during that time, 2,000 years ago, that you look at His life and, man, I desire to be like Him. How often do you think about wanting to faithfully walk like Christ? Do you think about faithfully walking like Christ through your day-to-day? -day, or is there something else that takes precedence over walking like Christ? I've got six short points for you. And one faithfully thing that we've got to do is we've got to be faithful in our daily prayer life. Amen? Over in Psalm uh, chapter 5. Psalm chapter 5. And we're just going to do some practicals today. Practical, how do we live like Christ? Because sometimes it's so easy to forget about some of the practical things about how to live because we within ourselves want to make things so complicated. We want to complicate things. But in Psalm chapter 5, verse 1, it's the Bible simply says, Listen to my words, Lord. Consider my life. Hear my cry for help, my King, my God, for you, for to you I pray. In the morning, Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, Marlon, I lay my request before you and wait expectantly. It's in the morning, the psalm of here, David, of course, talks about that God hears his voice. He says, hear my cry. Is that, what you, is that what your prayer life is like? You wait there, you pray about it, you do it with faith, you wait there in expectation. How is your prayer life going this morning? How has it been going this week? Has it been like, man, that passion, man, I just want to spend time with God. Or is it more like, I can't wait to eat my food. I can't wait to drink my coffee. I can't wait. You fill in the blank. Amen. But, but, but you see the passion here. That David has. He says, listen to my words. First thing, consider my life. Hear my cry for help. My king, my God. Is that what your relationship with God is like? In the morning, Lord, he says, hear my voice. In the morning, I lay my request before you. Now, why in the morning? Because you know that if you, where you, where you and I start in the morning, and how we start in the morning usually transpires to the rest of the day. Mm -hmm. And so if your day only conformed with coffee, that's when you're going to have a coffee day. If your day is conformed with watching your favorite morning show, that's what it's going to be. If your morning is, I'm getting up late trying to get out of bed so I can get to work on time, that's what your morning is going to be. If your morning is, I'm going to do something, but it ain't going to your job. That's the day that you and I set up throughout the day, right? But prayer, prayer is essential. David saw his need for prayer. Jesus himself saw his need for prayer in the garden. He, he prayed three times. Father, forgive him. Father, I, I need some help here. I, I don't want to take this cup. 
but let your will be done. Prayed it three times, right? Yeah. Jesus saw his need to go to God in prayer. How can you and I call ourselves Christians if we don't really spend all the time in prayer? Mm. Now, I, I understand that we are all human. We have distractions. I have distractions. Distractions come up. But when you set your mind and heart on things above yeah. and not on the earthly things, you know, the rest of your day, it's like the cloud is off you. It's like, I can go on my day. I totally trust God. I know He's going to meet my needs. And if anything hits me, I'm ready for it. All I got to do is go to God again in prayer, and I'm going to be okay. Amen. There's such a reassurance when you go to God in prayer. You come to church on Sunday, but you don't spend time praying. You come to midweek service, but you don't spend enough time praying. You come to Friday night Devo, you don't spend enough time praying. You get into a conversation that's very intense, but you don't pray about it before you get into it. Mm. And when you go into work and you want to share your faith, you want to be bold, you want to meet somebody, you, you, this person that you were looking at, you know, you know they're sad in their eyes, you look at them in their lives, but you don't spend time praying. You don't go to them because you are not filled up yourself. Come on. Come on. And so you're not inspired to share. You're not inspired to give because your prayer life is lacking, and that means if your prayer life is lacking, it means you're lacking too. Spiritually. Yeah. Yeah. Prayer is essential. From a scale of 1 to 10, how would you rate your prayer life? You don't need to raise your hand and say that. I want you to think about that. Wow. If your prayer life is below a 5, you got some work to do. Yeah. Now, I want you to understand that everybody has a different levels of prayer. Prayer is prayer, but when you pray, you got to pray faithfully. Amen. Even if your prayer life is out of two, are you praying out of two faithful? You see what I'm saying, guys? Amen. But if it's out of two, the next question you have to ask yourself, how much am I really giving to God versus the other things that take presence in my life? you got to ask yourself that. And you wonder why you go through the day and you struggle so much. You know what I mean? You're like, wait, why am I going through this? Like when things hit you and like you just get weirded out, you're like, man, I can't believe this is happening. I can't believe this is going on. And you know, I thought the money, you know, place was going to be. The, I thought, you know, whatever. And you're like, why is it? Well, then you have to ask yourself, how much did you spend time praying? Did you fall? What, what, what? You know, you know how you get in front of people and they're like, oh, they're they're all over the place, and you're just sitting there like watching them, and they're like bouncing off the wall and stuff. <laughs> You know, you think that you think you, you think they had like ten cups of coffee, you know, but then it, it's just they're overwhelmed and they're full of anxiety and it's like, what, what the world's going on? And I go, bro, how was your prayer time? Mm -hmm. Oh, bro, you know what? Yeah, I prayed for about three minutes, you know, and, and I was really in focus. Oh, okay, I understand. Okay, well, bro, you know what? Why don't you just go spend some time praying with God? You know, spend 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 a forty five minutes praying, and then come on back and let's let's have conversations. Right now, we can have a conversation. Because you're bouncing off the wall. I don't understand what in the world you're saying. I don't know where you're going to be able to help you. But if you go to God and let God help you, then you can come back and you can reason and you can think through sensibly where you're going, what's next in my life, a game plan for your life, and you can feel at ease and feel at peace in your life. Amen? Amen. And your prayer life, is it done out of duty because you generally desire a relationship with God? Or is it... Done because, you know, you, it's just, you know, uh, I, I just do it so I can make myself feel good. Mm. I, you know, I felt like I, I did my little checklist, I did my little prayer time. But you walk away and you still feel empty because you hadn't walked, you hadn't prayed and walked, walked away. Result. Because you are so connected to God. Practicals and prayer. Sometimes you just got to get focused. My wife likes to go in the closet. She goes in the closet and prays. Hey, honey, where you at? She can't hear me. Where you at, honey, where you at? And I'm looking all around for her, and then I, I go in the bedroom, and there's a closet there, and it says, honey, I'm in the closet praying. Hey, man. Now, now I know she, if, I, if, she, if I call out for her and she doesn't hear me in the morning, I know she's in the closet to pray. Amen. She, she gets on her hands and knees and she, she's in the closet praying. That's good. And you know, that fires me right on up. Because that means I'm going to have a really good day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
I never stop my wife from praying. I never stop praying. Honey, are you going to have your prayer time? Great. Awesome. I think on here, honey, you go ahead and do that. I'm, I'm pretty, yeah, you know. I tell you, that makes me feel secure that she's praying and that she's reading her Bible and she's not overwhelmed. I'm getting fired right on up there. That's yeah. awesome. And, and, you know, and of course, as these young, these, these engaged couples, you know, that's, that's one of the things to do. If you, if, you, if, you, if, if you're having struggles, you know, with your future wife, you know, you just say, honey, you know, just, just, just spend 30 minutes or so praying, and then just let's come back and let's talk about this. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right now, it's just not the right time, you know what I mean? Yeah. Even though, even though she might think it's the right time, but you got to gently do it. And so that she'll understand, and then she goes, and she comes back, and then it's all of a sudden, there's this big smile on the face, and she's at peace, and then she's not, you know, all over the place. It's, it's awesome! But that's what it's like, guys, when you, you get through the morning. Look, look, look at Mark chapter 1. But, but we, we were talking about this earlier. When you, first of all, now, Jesus wasn't in the play during the time that David wrote these prayers. Now, Jesus was with God in heaven, right? He wasn't even born yet on earth. But now Jesus is in the play, but David already understood this early morning thing. So let's, let's, let's look and see who else has this morning thing going on. In Mark chapter 1, verse 35. The Bible says, in Mark chapter 1, verse 35. Very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, and went off to a solitary place to pray. Where he prayed. Simon and his companions went to look for him. And when they found him, they exclaimed, Everyone is looking for you, Jesus replied. Let us go somewhere else to the nearby village so I can preach there also. That is why I have come. See, it wasn't just only David who prayed. Jesus, now 33 years old, uh, at this point, I think he's 33 or uh, 30. And he's going there praying to his father. The other disciples are looking for him. And you wonder, you know, they're looking for Jesus. Jesus got up early, so what were those guys doing? Sleeping. Perhaps, perhaps sleeping, right? Maybe they got up late. Yeah. Maybe they even perhaps skipped their quiet time. Mm -hmm. They skipped their quiet time. And they went to go find Jesus. Now, the Bible didn't say that, but perhaps that's what happened. But the Bible doesn't tell us that they had their quiet time too. Wow. But, the, it, but it gives us, perhaps if they're like us, and you knew that Jesus is the Messiah, and that they got a lot of security from Jesus, perhaps they went to Jesus before they spent time with God. Wow. Perhaps. I don't know. But if Jesus was here today and I could physically see him, touch him, watch his miracles, I would probably get trapped into relying on Jesus and not relying on my own personal relationship with God because he's this guy. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. And so if Jesus is the Lord and Master, then they may not, perhaps they did not see that they needed a prayer time. But of course you need a prayer time because Jesus himself had needed a prayer time to his fault. Yeah. You, you see what I'm saying, guys? And so my point here is, guys, we've got to be faithful in prayer. Amen. When you you and I are faithful in prayer, great things happen. Come on, bro. You, 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 you begin to, even if your life is obstinate, confusing, when you're praying, all that cloudiness sort of goes away because you're giving it all to God. Come on, brother. And when you give it all to God, you're at peace. But if you're in prayer and you're fighting to give it to God while you're in prayer and you walk out of that prayer time unfulfilled because you're fighting against God and not walking with God, then it becomes yeah. challenging. Yeah. And that's where your day feels like, ugh. Yeah. I don't really want to be at work. Mm -hmm. I'm in this hot sun. I don't want to do this. I don't want to do that. 
because you hadn't really made that connection. I know you guys can relate to that. Yeah. You know, you go to work every day. You don't want to, sometimes you don't want to be there. Yeah. Because you aren't purposeful mm -hmm. in your life. When you feel like you have a purpose mm -hmm. in your life, you then you feel like, man, I want to be there. Yeah. And every true disciple has a purpose in your life. And the reality of it is, if we go to work, sometimes we, we just don't want to be there. That's just human nature. But when you are locked in on Jesus, you man, I got a purpose today. God is going to lead me to somebody. Somebody's going to be open for me to share my life with, for me to give my life with, to, and it's going to be an incredible day. Yeah. You got to be faithful in prayer. And then point number two, faith, faithful daily Bible study. On, Faithful daily Bible Look over at Acts chapter 17. Nah. Come on. Real practical today, guys, right? Yeah. Sometimes we get, we get away from the practice. Yeah. Bible says here in, in Acts chapter 17, verse 11, it says, Now the Berean Jews were of more noble character than the those of Thessalonians. For they received the message of great eagerness, examined the scriptures every day to see if what Paul said was true. You know, these, these Bible students were great. These Jews were incredible. At least the Berean Jews were. It says eagerly examine the Scriptures every day. Is there an eagerness every day to examine the Scripture? That's one thing you're taking into the level of prayer. But now you've got this incredible book that's the greatest book on the planet. It's the most powerful book on the planet. It's the most life-changing book on the planet. It is, this book is God. And this book has been around from the very beginning because God Himself is the Word. Even though the physical book wasn't there, but God is the Word of God. The Word is God. He was with God. And He was with God from the beginning, as the Bible says in John 1. And so why wouldn't someone take out the time and read and investigate the most powerful book on the planet? Why? Because you don't really see the, the power in it. Mm -hmm. And the only way that you and I can see the power in the Word of God is we got to start applying it. you got to apply it. Real simple, right? Now my question to you is, how often do you apply the Bible to your life? Some of you are so, perhaps, so skilled at Xbox. You're more skilled at Xbox than you ever read your life. You're more skilled at video games. You know more about the movies that's coming out before they come out than you know about the Bible. You know all the details about every movie. You know every chapter of that movie. But do you know every chapter of the Bible? Do you know the impact? You know the impact of that movie that you love and you can't wait to come out. You dream about it. You wait for a year before it comes out. And then when it comes out, you're the first one to get the ticket. You buy it in advance, even if it's a $50 ticket. No, not $50 ticket. Maybe $20. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, maybe I'm over-exaggerating, but somebody says $5. That's right. But that is the most incredible $5 you'd ever want to have because you are so engaged in this movie. Now, what if you were so engaged in Jesus? Come on. So engaged in his death, his burial, and his resurrection, and the power that it has brought the world, the power that it, it the, 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 the life changes that that death, burial, and resurrection took place, and how it changes our lives. What would your life be like? if you were that engaged in the cross. Wow. See, we got to faithfully be digging in our Bible studies. Come on, bro. Get back to the basics, you know. We're a church that we believe in taking notes. Amen. We take notes. That's why we got books and pads out and, and we take notes. Why? Because you don't want to just, you know, Bereans, they eagle exam scripture to see what Paul said. They didn't take it from what Paul had to say. They wanted to go back and research it themselves. Come on. You know, when I get with people on campus, or I get with people, I ask them, you know, who say they're Christians, why do you believe in the hope that you believe? Mm 
Why do you believe in Jesus? You know, the first thing they do, they say, well, uh, my preacher, my preacher said this. My preacher said that. No, 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 no. Why do you believe in what you believe? Come on. I, 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 don't, I don't want to know about your preacher. What about you believe? Uh, you know, they're, they're so consumed about what they're preaching because they don't know their Bible because their preacher is the Bible. Yeah, that's wow. true. Wow. That's their living Bible, the preacher. And so you call yourself a Christian and you don't even know the Bible or even read your Bible, really? Now, I don't say that to them. Of course, I, I sit back and say, let's, let's get together and study the Bible. I want to show you how to do it. You know, we don't judge people because they don't read the Bible. But we look, we, we are a personal example and, and we share our life and our story and we hope that our story impacts them. And then we get in and we do a little Bible study and we teach them. How to love God. Come on. That's how it. to have quiet times. Yeah. That's it. How to be faithful. Yeah. How to love your neighbor as yourself. How to consider others better than yourselves. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. That's what we do. But we don't judge them. <coughs> we love them, teach them how to do it, right? Amen. Yeah. Come on, bro. Amen. And that's what it's about. What does God want me to learn when you're in your quiet time? You ask, when you read the Bible, it's an opportunity to ask questions. You see what the Bible says and you write down, you know what, I don't know what this means, but what does this mean for me? You dig deep, you, you get in there, and you, you reason with God, you talk to Him, you, you ask questions, you, you, you get a, a dictionary, if you don't understand, you get a encyclopedia, you get a commentary, and you dig in there as though it's gold, it's riches, this changes my life, it'll change other people's lives. But no, we do the checklist. You know, I, have my little, I, I, I didn't write my little psalms for the day. And I say, man, psalms are awesome. I love the psalms. I read the psalms. But dig in there to change my character. Yeah. You got to ask, yeah. what is my struggle? You got to know what your struggle is. Yeah. You don't know what your struggle is. You, you, you haven't started the battle. Once you know what your struggle is, then you can go after that struggle. And you go after that struggle that you have so that it can be a victory and so that you can change. But you don't let up on God's word until you have changed. Amen. Come on, man. You're different. Come on. It's not just you see that you're different, but other people around you see that you're different. Come on. Amen. How do you get the most out of your Bible study? You can always ask an older disciple. You know, don't, don't wait to figure it out. Ask. You ask, you shall receive, right? Yeah. How many of us love to read their Bible? Raise your hands. Okay, yeah, you, you really love to read the Bible? Yeah. Okay, yeah, now, now, no, Aaron, no, no. If I ask you, how much do you read your Bible on a daily basis? Or how much time do you put in your Bible? I, I'm not going to ask you that, but then I want, I want you to ask yourself that, and then you say, when you raise your hand, does you raise your hand coincide with the time you spend with them. Right. Re re reality. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. And then when you raise your hand, you ask yourself, is my Bible studies, is it changing my life? Wow. And is it evident because other people have said to me, you've changed. You know, the Bible says the heart is deceitful above all things and beyond cure, right? right? Who can understand it? We don't understand our own hearts. Jeremiah 17, 9, by the way. We don't understand our own hearts, Right? And so if we don't understand our own hearts, then we need other people to at least investigate and look and see where our lives are. Now, we're not the judge, but when we see what we see, what you are is what we see. You are what you eat. You are what you drink, right? Right. And so that's the beauty of discipleship. That is the beauty of being faithful in prayer. Faithful in our lives and our Bible studies. Amen? Amen. You gotta have a vision. You gotta have a vision. You gotta go deeper in your Bible studies. Quest Bibles, Concordance, you can Google, Google, it's amazing. Anything you want to know, Google, Google has it. It's amazing. You, you don't have to ask me for just go to Google. So if I don't know something right off, I can go Google it right now. That's that's what I get. Google. Oh, oh, there. There you go. You got the answer. 
Now, of course, you got to know your Bible well enough that some things in Google will maybe a little bit off. Uh, yeah. Okay, you got to understand that too. All right? And so you, you got you got to understand that. So, but that takes wisdom and discernment. That takes lots of time that you've read and investigated the Bible. You see the difference. You see the true doctrine versus the false doctrine that people plug in to some of these commentaries and different things like that. Yeah. Right. And that just takes a little time to be able to learn and understand the difference of what someone else says and what the Bible says and how that's translated. So that's super important. Amen. Come on, bro. Point number three. The heart. Uh, faithful daily discipline. Faithful daily discipline. Luke 9. Let's turn over Luke 9. Come on, bro. Verse 23. Come on, Anthony. Come on. 23 to 25. The Bible says, Oh, I'm going to get Max. The Bible says, Then he said to them all, Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross daily and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it. But whoever loses their life for me will save it. What gives it for one to gain the whole world and yet lose or forfeit their very self? Whoever is ashamed of me and my words, the Son of Man will be ashamed of them when he comes into glory and the glory of the Father and of the holy angels. Several aspects here. First of all, Jesus in the crowd there. And he always uses the opportunity to move the hearts of the crowd or to challenge the crowd and make sure they stir them in the right direction. Amen. And he tells them, anyone who come out must deny themselves. Denying yourself is not an option. It is a command to deny yourself. And it it's one of the most powerful things of discipline that one could have if they choose to be disciplined. Because we latch on to the world and the things of the world. You know, every time I go buy a Hummer, I want it. You know, it's funny. I, I was in this uh, Home Depot truck because I was moving some, some wood to this, this home this week. And um, I pulled right up to a Hummer. And I rolled the window down. I said, hey! He said, hey! I said, you want to sell that Hummer? And I was joking, of course, but I, I, just, I just had to say it. He said, sure, give me a number. And I, I just paused there. I didn't give him a number. And he said, I want you to know it's a huge gas guzzler. Uh, I said, yes, I know it's a huge gas guzzler. But that was that. I, I, I pulled up. I literally rolled my window down. And I said, give me a number. And I, I just, it was just burning in me to just ask. Just to say it. You know what I mean? I know I couldn't have it, but it, just to ask, you know. You, you know what I mean? And it, it, was, it was just kind of a weird thing, but I, I just had to do it. Right? <laughs> I had to do it. But I guarantee you, if I was in the world, I probably would have been serious about it. Because, you know, I, it, it's just, you know, you just want to have things, right? And so my point in that is, is anyone who comes to Jesus must deny themselves. Deny themselves the desires that you want. Deny the desires that you think that means the most to you. But what really means most? What is the most to Jesus? Yeah. you got to develop your schedule around the kingdom of God. Workshops, family group times. you got to be disciplined. Church events, studying the Bible with your friends. Those things are good. you got to make a weekly schedule. The chores that you do, you got to be disciplined in it. Because when I walk in some people's houses, I see sometimes clothes piled up as tall as this sculpture here. Okay? You can't do that, guys. You gotta be disciplined, right? Yeah. You gotta do the dirty laundry. Right. Don't wait two, three weeks to do your dirty laundry. Amen. Because it smells, right? right? And some people can don't do the dirty laundry for one week and it smells. Like it's been hanging out for three weeks. You gotta set up that time to work out. And I'm speaking to myself, guys. You got that hobby time. You got to be disciplined. Faithfully, daily, discipline. And then guess what? When you're faithfully, daily, discipline, guess what happens? You feel great about life. Yeah. The anxiety and the worry and all that stuff is gone because you had a plan. You opened your book. You opened your schedule. Every disciple should have a daytime. 
And in that daytime, and there should be things and schedules in that daytime, right? If you, it's hard to be a disciple if you don't plan, you don't have plans. If you can't put something in your daytime, and it means you're probably just living for yourself. There's no activity going on in your life. There should be always that. Should be, you should always be in Bible studies. You should always have someone to study the Bible with if you're a true disciple. I'm not saying you're a fake false disciple. I'm just saying if you call yourself a true disciple, you should always be in Bible studies. You've got to have that co co uh, hobby time, but in moderation. You know? What is your priority of your life? You know, you got to walk with your disciple part. You know, people who mentor your life. You've got to walk with them. Continue to learn. We are learners. We grow, right? Same way you walk with your, your spouse, your husband, your wife, right? You guys spend that time. Well, you should be spending quality time together, right? Now, if you're not spending quality time together, there's something wrong with that, too. Yeah. And you, need some, you need some extra marriage counseling, right? Because that is your number one prior. I mean, God is your number one prior, but that is your number one disciple. Your number one disciple. Amen? Yeah. Perhaps some of you don't know what a schedule is supposed to look like. If you don't know what a schedule is supposed to look like, that's all you got to do is ask somebody who has a schedule and you can get the help you need. Daily discipline. Isn't it? I appreciate, uh, I appreciate uh, Miss Betty coming over to help my wife uh, last week uh, uh, cleaning out all the cabinets in the kitchen. That's awesome. You know, my wife, she does a lot of stuff as a, as a mom, a lot of stuff, and sometimes, you know, a little bit more than she needs to. And Jesus said, you know what? Betty, please come over and help me. I see your house is so organized and your cabinets or whatever. Please help me out. It was awesome. Now that I can go in my cabinets, I can actually find things. Yeah. Pretty cool. <laughs> Pretty cool. Pretty cool, right? Here we found, we, my sister was looking for a camera for like three months. And, and I realized I'm the one that put the camera up and top of the cabinet. We couldn't find it because there was so cluttered in that cabinet. Sorry about that, sister. Yeah. <laughs> well, I had to really think about it, but now she's got a camera now. She's taking pictures and all that stuff. And, you know, it's pretty awesome, right? You got to get rid of the clutter, isn't it, guys? You got to be disciplined, guys. Discipline your Bible studies, your prayer life, and, and so on. Anybody who loves discipline, raise your hand. Wow! Two people. Oh, well, maybe three. That's pretty awesome. And I mean, that, that's pretty awesome. Now, did you see people raise their hand? Now you need to go to them and find out what is what this point about. Just talk to them. That's all you got to do. I mean, I'm glad. I'm glad you love this one. I mean, I, 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 I personally. Um, I don't like discipline, but I know I have to be disciplined. Yeah. And so, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, everybody, yeah, everybody's yeah. like, oh, okay. But here's the other yeah. yeah. topic. Here's the other topic. But I deny myself. Yeah. 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 I deny myself that yeah. that's the key. Yeah. I deny myself that I do what is right so that I can feel great about God, life, and I can lead my family spiritually. Amen, yeah. guys? Amen. Yeah. Because I'm probably the most disciplined in my family. And I, I, I guess I shouldn't be tooting myself on the show. I know, right? I'm going to be And I get on every single person's nerves. <laughs> They're like, Dad, can you stop? You told me five times to clean my room. Dad, I don't get the dishes. Dad, honey. But they, they, they get it. They eventually they get it. They get it. They get it. Okay. All right. I'm still waiting. Hebrews 12. Amen. Wow. Wow. Yeah, actually, I grew up that way, guys. I grew up cleaning toilets. I uh, grew up washing dishes. I, my brother and I uh, was, would fight to wash dishes. What? Yes, we would fight to wash dishes. I know it's weird, but my, my mom, we, we actually enjoy cleaning. Oh, that's good. And so I guess that I, you know, growing up now, 50 years old, I still that's still a part of me. And so I, I guess if you grow up like that, sometimes you, sometimes these things work out for you. And so that's how I grew up. And I, you know, and, and I don't mind. Any, I don't. And my wife is my wife is so happy about that because she's just the opposite of me. But she denies herself. She denies herself. She denies herself. She denies herself. There you go. But uh, it, it's good when you when you have. Uh, people that, 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 that help each other, they, they, they complement each other, that's a good thing, right? But in Hebrews 12, Come on, bro. verse 3, the Bible says, Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners, so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. 
You know, here, uh, the Bible tells us, this is him, who endured opposition and do not grow weary and lose heart. You know, guys, we can't lose heart. Through faithful, dis faithfully daily discipline, when things don't happen the way you do, when you're not, you know, your schedule is not right, you've got to just stay faithful. And, 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 and when you see things are not going right, you, you just step up to the plate and say, okay, I'm going to make this change right now. It's, it's so easy, guys. We complicate things, right? We complicate things so much. You know, all you got to do is say, okay, I see the need and I'm going to do it. But if you sit there and you go, uh, and you're still, you, you know, and you're, you're, you're wondering if what you're going to do, and you, you're procrastinating, you're trying to figure out the different design and the way you're going to do it, you, you, you figure out, you know, okay, well, if I do it this direction, it won't go that way. If I do it this direction, it won't go that way. If you sit there and you try to examine what you're going to do, you will frustrate yourself. Just do it. Why? That's why Nike came out with it, right? Just do it. Just do it. Simple. Right? If you want to be pure, just be pure. Amen. Right? If you don't want to be glutton, then don't be glutton. Right? If you don't want to have obesity, you know, you say no to obesity. Right? If you want to work out, if you know you need to work out, you just do it. Right? Yeah. Preach to myself. You just do it. Come on, honey. And so I want you to understand, if you're struggling with reading your Bible, just do it. It's amazing when you just do it. Something happens when you just do it. Come on. If you want to be fruitful, then you just share your faith yeah. and do it, right? Come on. Come on. If you want to have a husband, then you be husband. You, you get humble and you pray and surrender to God and God will give you a husband, right? It may take you a little time, but you'll get it, right? And just do it. If you want to win somebody over, you just do what you have to do. Win somebody over. And righteously, right? Amen. 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 That's it. You just... Do it. So, guys, we just need to do it. Wow. Hebrews 12. You don't have to turn the page. It's right there. That's that pretty cool, right? In verse 11, it says, No discipline seems pleasant at the time, but painful. Later on, however, produces a harvest of righteousness and peace with those who have been trained by it. See, in order to be disciplined, guys, it's not pleasant, right? It's not pleasant to, to get up in the morning and read your Bible. Because that's not something you're accustomed to do. You know, it's not pleasant, you know, to have to come home and clean your room on a daily basis. That's not pleasant. You know, I'm trying to get I'm trying to keep my pool blue. I'm having a hard time keeping it blue. It's green. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's been green for about two months. And so I had a guy come over yesterday, and finally he's going to come and help fix this thing up, right? Yeah. So we have a blue pool. So you guys can come on and jump in the pool and swim. Yeah. But it takes daily discipline to keep a pool blue, right? <laughs> to keep your floors sweat with dog hair on the floor, right? Oh, boy. You guys know that. You guys know my dog shares hair, and then you, you sweep it, and you get a pile of bowl, like a bowl of hair on the floor. Thank God we don't have rugs and carpet, you know, but a little section of rugs. Right? But no discipline seems pleasant. But here is the here is the, the bonus here. Gives you a bonus. It says, however, it produces a harvest of righteousness and peace. Yes. Now even to say that word peace is kind of freaks me right on up. Right? For those who are trained by the discipline. Amen. And so what should we do? We should embrace the discipline of God. Amen. When God is disciplining you, even though you hate it, you got to embrace it. you got to embrace it. It takes discipline, guys, to get in there and do fundraisers. Yeah. Hit your special missions, right? Yeah. You know, what will these special missions we do? We want to eventually appoint in unpaid interns, right? And appoint interns to keep the work in church growing, right? You gotta have discipline in your life. You want to build the great church, amen. You know, Noah was fired up about leading the campus. Yeah. I know we can't wait till campus comes back. So he's fired up. He wants to lead that campus. And Christiana, you know, working side by side with Noah and somebody else. Amen. Now, now, again, again, we've we've got some young lads that will be coming in from Los Angeles. Uh, they'll be here June 21st, June 22nd. And they'll have some additions there on the campus to help that campus run out there. But
what? Uh, you gotta be fired up, guys. Mary's fired up on that Come on, Mary. Yeah. 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 Come on, Mary. You know, and I know Erin Aaron wants to get in the mix there. And she's on, she's, she's, she's camping there and working working full time job. And I know she's she's really wanting to engage in there. And eventually God's gonna open up a door for her to engage in there so that she can be right with those campus students there. And the battle. That's what it's about, guys. We got John Yu. John Yu. That guy, guy, he, he, engineer, you know, chemical engineer. What a task this guy's got! You know, coming from China and uh, you know, still trying to learn the language. He does a great job in English, but he's still learning, and he's learning fast. You got to have a great mind to be the, the, the desire to go in the chemical engineer. Amen, guys. Uh, calculus and all that stuff is just not going to forget it. Don't even ask me anything. My wife does all that stuff with the kids. I said, honey, you go ahead right on. My, you know, my kids, my kids they, they laugh at me and joke, say, Dad, come on, Dad, you, you got a third grade level on your. But they don't really say that. I'm just saying to myself. But, but, but it, you know, I've had this stuff, but you, you know, as you go through the years, you forget about some of this stuff. So I, I just let her do it. I, she's good at it. I just let her do it anyway. Good. I'm not saying I ain't willing to learn, but you know, yeah, yeah. It's just it's just one of those things, amen? It's one of those things. Point number four. And I'm probably not gonna get to point number six, so I'm kidding guys, but I'm gonna do point number four. Faithfully daily accountability. Faithful daily accountability. Hebrews, we stand in Hebrews, Hebrews chapter three. These are our keys to living like Jesus. Amen, guys? Accountability in our life. Hebrews chapter 3, verse 12. Through 14. The Bible says, See to it, brothers and sisters, that none of you have a sinful, unbelieving heart that turns away from the living God. But encourage one another daily as long as it's called the day, so that none of you may be hardened by sin's deceitfulness. You know, the Bible here tells us, the Hebrew writer tells us here, he says, see to it that none of you have a sinful, unbelieving heart that turns away from a living heart. Whose responsibility is it for us to see to it that none of us have a sinful, unbelieving heart? It's your responsibility. It's our responsibility. It's your responsibility. It's our responsibility to help each other to get to heaven. You know, it's like a mom or a father who raises up their children, they want the best for their kids. And not necessarily best for their kids in a spiritual sense if the parents themselves are not one who is invested in the Bible. But there is still that element. You want your family, your people, your kids, your family of God to do well spiritually. What is a sinful, unbelieving heart? Stop believing when you stop believing that God can change your situation. Wow. That is a sinful, yeah. unbelieving heart. That you don't believe that you can stop, that you can be pure in your life. That you're faithless. That is a sinful, unbelieving heart that turns away from the living God. When you constantly battle with pride, and there's not that growth. And you stop believing that you can change. And it's evident that you stop believing because you stop going after it. You stop talking to people. You stop praying about it. It's not in your life. It's not an alarm and indignation about it. And people around you know because you don't talk about it. But they still see the evidence of that pride in your life. When you stop believing that you're going to have a great job that's going to be able to pay your bills. That's a sinful unbelief in a heart. That's right. When you're giving direction in your life and you don't obey, because the Bible says we need to obey our leaders and submit to their authority, they keep watch over you as one who must give it a count. Obey them so that their work will be a joy, not a burden, which is no advantage to you. You see, that's a sinful unbelief. Have you allowed others to hold you accountable in your life? Why, why not? See, I need accountability. I need accountability in my speech. Because I'm the kind of guy that just says what comes off my tongue sometimes. So 
So I have to have a lot of restraint. I've learned that restraint. But still, my wife, who's a loving wife, she, she says, honey, you gotta watch it. You, you just gotta, you know, not just tell, not just say what you think. Sometimes I just say what I think. And, I, and, then, and then all of a sudden I hurt somebody's feelings. Or, you know, it might be true, but it's just, you know. So I've got to hold back and think about what I say so that when I say it, it draws people in but not propels people away. Right? And we all have certain struggles like that, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, thank God that my wife is in my life. Thank God that my son is in my life. Thank my sons are in my life. Because I have opened up a door for them to talk to me about what they see. Because I want to grow. I want to change. And what better way to grow when you live with somebody who sees your life on a daily basis. But here's the problem. Apathy. Being mm -hmm. apathetic. Mm. And uh, I've been talking about this word apathetic for the last yeah. Yeah. couple weeks now, right? Mm -hmm. You just kind of blow it off. I mean, you saw the terminology. You look up, you look up the, you Google the word apathetic in your phone, you'd be shocked at what it says. I mean, there's some some some, some strong terminology there. It's like, well, I don't want to be apathetic. And I don't want the church. That's apathetic. You get apathetic in your household, so you don't hold each other accountable, you don't challenge their lives. You just like, you know what, let them feel, let them do it for themselves. There's laziness. There's there's a unwillingness to, to care. You you don't want to do that. You know, and so it's, it's cool. So as I've been studying out this stuff, it's it's interesting because now I'm able to pick up things when people say things that are not of God. I, you know, I got to deal with that right away. You know, don't don't let somebody say this is not worth my time. Mm -hmm. If you're in the kingdom of God and you're a fitting time family, somebody say, hey, it's not worth my time going to the race game. Mm -hmm. That's that's a, that's a problem. That's, that's a big problem there because what is what did the Rays baseball game represent? A lost mission is a lost soul. Yeah. A lost soul. It's not worth my time. It's not worth my time getting together and hanging out with the brothers and sisters today. Why is it not worth your time? It should always be worth your time to spend time with disciples. Yeah. Spend time with people you're supposed to love them, right? Yeah. It's never a waste of time to do what is right. Amen. See, when you start thinking that, oh, oh baby, yeah. you're going the wrong direction here. See, I'm able to start picking up all those things, guys. That, 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 that is selfishness. Yeah. Self-centeredness. Yeah. We, we don't want to be self-centered, right? And so we've got to have that daily accountability in our lives so that people see. What kind of heart are we dealing with with someone who doesn't like to be held accountable? You know, what, what, what are we dealing with? Are we dealing with the heart that's, that's missing the grace of God. You're missing the grace that, that you see that you and I are undeserving to have a great kingdom of God. We're undeserving to have a family that tells us what they see. We're undeserving to have a family who loves me enough to, 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 to encourage me, to challenge my character, to challenge my words, to challenge my heart when my heart is not in the right place, to challenge my lack of purity or, or lack of faith or... Or, or ingratitude or lack of servitude. Yeah. You know, this, this house, guys, is, is your house too. And so we want to take care of it. Thank you guys for coming in this morning. The sisters coming in and helping out other brothers and get together and help us clean it up after we eat today. That's awesome. And that's family. I shouldn't have to tell you pick a paper from the floor. Sweep my floor for me. Put my chairs away, right? Because this is the family God. This is God's house. That's what families do, right? Yeah. You know, it's, it's interesting because, you know, we, we uh, had just began to, to, to invest our, our new career in entrepreneur coming up and invest in the properties. And uh, we, we go into some of these homes and, uh, you know, these, some of these homes, they got like six, seven, eight, nine, ten people living in their homes. Dang. And so, and, and they do this thing, they work together as a team. It's like, wow, you know, they, 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 they you know, they, they have, they have businesses together, they work together, they clean together, you watch them sleeping together, you know, seven, eight people live in the same household. These are families, right? And it's like, wow, this is awesome. You know, some people in culture, they just naturally have that going on. But then you get into, then you got another part of the culture that, that, you know, that they're so self-centered, so into themselves, that they don't see a need. To, to, to operate like a family. Mm -hmm. And so we, and, and so for us, 
It's our responsibility to hold each other accountable. See, there to no one has a sinful, unbelieving heart that turns away from the living God. And so what do we need to do, guys? We need to be open. We need to be transparent in our lives. You know, when, when we go through things, we, we've got to have daily part of being, uh, accountability is being open, transparent, daily contact. Talking every day, confessing sin. Disciples confess their sins. You should be confessing sin every day if you have sin that you need to confess. Some people wait and they fall into the sin and they confess it later. And if you, the goal is, is not to have to confess sin. The goal is, is to be able to be righteous. And then when you're tempted in that sin, you say no to ungodliness. Yeah. Yeah. You don't just give into it. Yeah. Right. But you got to do it faithfully. But if it's not faithful, then you're going to fall into the sin because you're not faithful to God. You stop believing. And so when you give up, you say, you know what? I'm sinful. I'm just going to go ahead and give into it anyway because I don't believe that God can change my situation. Wow. you got to ask people how you're doing. See, it's interesting. When you, when, you, when you ask people to hold you accountable, they will. And then when you initiate and tell people what you're doing and what you need help, you get help. Those who ask, you receive, right? Yeah. The people who grow the most are those who get open about their lives and then they allow themselves to be discipled. You open up yourself, then you're going to get discipled that you need. Yeah. But if you conceal these things in your life and no one knows but you and God, but God doesn't really talk to you physically, but He talks to you through the Word, and you're having struggles being obedient to His Word, then because you are a visual person and you need a body in front of you to direct you, some people don't know how to make that connection to God. They, are more, they make a more of a connection to people. But as you continue to fight, and you're fighting with your relationship with God in the Bible, then you begin to sense and feel a connection with God. But then as all the disciples, can, our goal is to help you to get to that. Amen? You've got to ask people to hold your accountable in areas of weight, getting up in the morning, purity, quiet time, chores, things that we've already talked about. Amen, guys? Amen. Every disciple takes on a responsibility to love and hold each other up accountable to stay faithful. Amen, guys? Amen. And of course, we already sort of touched base on the heart of daily evangelism, but I, I do want to touch on this uh, real brief. I said I wouldn't do another point. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I want to touch on this because I do think this is a, this is a, uh, a weakness in the church that has become in a church that needs to be uh, implemented and, and embraced so that you and I can re remind you of what uh, we're supposed to be doing. Amen? Amen. But uh, that's point number five. Uh, faithful daily evangelism. Acts chapter five. It's hard to leave that one out. Right? You guys... In the, in the sixth point, it's hard to leave out too, but <laughs> I'll just give you scriptures with me. Uh, in Acts chapter 5. <laughs> you know, when you put a lesson together, you hate not doing the whole thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. You just got to do it. You got to do it because you put the time in it, right? The time is looking at me like, hmm, we got about, uh, you know, five minutes left on the tape here. But, uh, <laughs> and you're going to run out. <laughs> <laughs> The Bible says, now I, I, she may not be thinking that, but you know, I just think. But uh, the Bible says here in Acts chapter 5, verse 42. Day after day in the temple courts, from house to house, they never stop teaching and proclaiming the good news that Jesus is the Messiah. Guys, this was the heart of the disciples back then, and this should be the heart of the disciples today. Amen, guys? Never stop proclaiming the good news. Amen. You guys know in Mark chapter 4, verse 14, you know, Jesus called out his first disciples. They were urgent. They were sacrificial. Uh, they made time. They denied themselves. Uh, they went after it. You know, they had Acts 2, 42, verse 27. They had daily uh, gatherings. Amen. They had people in their home. They kept it clean. They were respectable. They served. They made new friends, guys. you got to make new friends. You're a disciple. Amen, guys? We've got to be day after day disciples. Who loves it? Day after day disciples. There should never be a day that you just stop being a disciple. Yeah. Right. Never be a day. And you've got to deny yourself and you've got to fight for it every day. Amen, guys? Yeah. And of course, I'm going to give you the scripture. Last point six. Faithful daily renewal. Mm -hmm. And the Bible says here, in closing, 
Therefore, we do not lose heart. Though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but what, what is unseen, since what is unseen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. Our death produces life. More and more people are getting baptized for their glory. You know, perspective, light and momentary trouble, guys. Light and momentary trouble. Every, all, everything that you and I go through is just momentary. When you are constantly renewing your lives day by day. Every day I wake up, and I had a bad day the day before, I can wake up, the day is a new day, to start all over again. Amen. And that's the beauty about Christianity, that you and I can start all over again. Amen? Amen. And so I want to challenge you guys to really excel in your daily prayer faithfully. Amen? Amen. To excel in your Bible studies on a daily basis faithfully. To faithfully have that daily discipline. Amen? Amen. To faithfully allow someone to hold yourself accountable, allow other people to hold you accountable so that you will remain true to the Lord. Amen? Amen. And don't forget that incredible evangelism, guys. And That's why you want to go to church. That's why there's souls that are lost out there who are seeking and they're just waiting for you to knock on their door. And lastly, daily renewal, as we talked about, guys. And if we, as, as we're going through this, guys, we're fighting a good fight. We're being faithful, guys. Guess what? God's church is going to be built. Uh, the, the world is going to be changed and turned upside down and this generation to God be the glory. Amen. Amen.